And he joins me right now. We're talking about the brand new series, How I Met Your Father. Chris, how you doing, man? Doing well. Thanks for having me, Brad. Let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the series. Let's just start it off right there. How I Met Your Father. It's on Hulu right now. The first season streaming. Um, coming off a big property of How I Met Your Mother. I mean, was there any trepidation on your part? of going into such a big franchise, especially it being like a, a, a spinoff of such a popular series? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think the, the the big fear is that, you know, the original had such iconic characters that I, I really didn't want to feel like I was competing with those guys. And I think the smartest thing that the creators did with our show is allow it to exist in the world of the original. So I think fans will have a lot of Enjoy watching the new version of the show without trying to replicate the characters because those characters were so special and their own thing and I think they've allowed us to kind of play in our own sandbox which is really nice so it's not too it's not too intimidating in that respect well you know I think that I think that you're absolutely right about the way the show set up because when it came out my fiance and I started watching it we immediately you know, took to it. It's a real fun show. It's um, it's different than How I Met Your Mother, but it still has this a similar vibe with the the camaraderie between the group. So I really like that. And then when you when you look at kind of spinoffs that have happened before of certain shows, um, you know, I'd say that this one is more of a Frasier than it is a Joey, if you know what I mean. Like I feel like this one has legs. Do do you like the <laughs> do you like the response yeah, that yeah, you've gotten? No, I, yeah, the response been overwhelming. It's been great. And I, I think that's accurate. You know, I think it, it does feel more like a Fraser than a Joey. I think it's, it's uh, you know, ironically, even though the original ended not that long ago, so much has changed in terms of the dating landscape and the work landscape with regards to apps and how much we're online now and how much is done digitally. And I think that gave the writers just a lot of room to run. You know, there's just, it, it's fun to kind of look at all these different versions of, of how uh, dating and working today can go awry. But I think you're right, too, at the end of the day, it's, it's a show about friendship, which all the best sitcoms are, whether it's whether it's Cheers or Frasier or Friends or Seinfeld or How I Met Your Mother. Basically, the recipe is you just get a bunch of friends together and watch them have fun in New York City. I think that's kind of like, that's, that's, the, that's the secret sauce. And right now, I mean, the show... Is, is debuted. You've had a great response. How was it working with one of your co-stars, Hillary Duff, who, from my generation of people, a lot of no, a lot of people know her as Lizzie McGuire. She was going to do that Lizzie McGuire like reboot thing, and then went right into How I Met Your Father. Did you enjoy working with her on this series? Yeah, it's spectacular. You know, it's it's, it's so interesting because she's such an icon in her own right, and. It just to, to, to watch her kind of be able to really spread her wings on the show and I think work with a little bit more mature material than she was ever allowed to on something like Lizzie McGuire has really, it's just been a great opportunity to just like see what she's capable of. And she's just like a great human being. You know, that's one of the nicest. It's just, you, you know, you work on a lot of great jobs. It's not often that like every single person you get along with as well. And on this show, we're all just six Extremely close, and I think that starts at the top, which is with Hillary. She's just a really good number one on a call sheet. She, she really sets a great uh, atmosphere for the rest of us to kind of embody and play in. And, and you can't ask for anything better than that. No, I mean you want you want the vibe to be right on set, no matter what, and especially with somebody like Hillary Duff, because I think that. Some people would to, were tuning in just to see, oh, hey, Hillary Duff has a new show. Oh, it's a spinoff of How I Met Your Mother. Let's see what this is going to be about. And to me, you know, Hillary Duff doesn't take away from the show at all. Like, you're not distracted by her. Like you said, she's an icon in her own right. People know her as this already famous character when she was a kid. You don't think about that at all in this in this show, which I think is a good thing. I think it works to the benefit of the show because the character, the writing, so strong and the relationships are great. And it really, it really, um, it really works, man. I really like the show a lot. The other show, though, that I love you from, I'm a lifelong pro wrestling fan, and Glow was so oh, fantastic. Oh, I wish that that show was still hey, still going, I, but. I, 
you and me both. Listen, we were shooting the fourth season when COVID started. That's why we had, we knew exactly where it was going, how it was going to end. It was, it was, it was lined up, man. It was so heartbreaking to not be able to finish telling that story because I agree with you. I think that world and and what Liz and Farley created on that show was was something extraordinarily special. Let me ask you this: Were you a pro wrestling fan before that, or was this a brand new? world for you to kind of understand a brand new world i i my brother was a diehard wrestling fan but i had no idea what i was getting myself into none whatsoever i would have to have the wrestling coach on the show explain to me all of these moves that i'm yelling out as the announcer because i had no idea what i was doing <laughs> um beyond watching a, a lot of footage of the original glow to try and uh, replicate the, the the announcer, but beyond that, I had no idea what was going on. It was it, it, except you understand. I'm sitting there watching the actual actors doing these fights. I mean, the amount of stunt work they did was really remarkable, and they were doing all that crazy stuff. It's um, you know, the 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 show though, and this is me coming from being a wrestling fan and working with wrestling. You know, Chavo, who was one of the uh, uh, consultants on the show, is a friend of mine. Key is a friend of Matt mine. Chavo was the best. Yeah, they're just they're they're great people. But but to me, when you have like a show that's based around a uh, a sport or a sports entertainment with such a rabid fan base, it's it's sometimes we as wrestling fans we want to reject it immediately. Right? Oh, they're doing this show on Netflix about wrestling. They don't know anything about it. And then you watch the first season, and there's such a care put into uh, making sure that wrestling doesn't come off as this sideshow freak show that, you know, it's a respected form of art that, especially your character, sees. I think you're the voice of the wrestling fans in the show. Bash Howard is the voice. And, yeah, um, yeah. and we were kind of looking at the show through your eyes. Well, but, and you have to understand, like, I think I think what was nice about the show, I, I definitely know what you're talking about, where as a fan of the sport, you don't want it to come across like we're making fun of the sport. And I think if anything, especially the women who were having to do all the training, we all very quickly had this profound respect for just how incredibly difficult and how much of an athletic ability is required to pull it off. Because, I mean, it's exhausting. It's incredible to watch. Yeah, it's 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 um to see what what people put their bodies on the line to do, you know, on a day to day in wrestling, especially back in the eighties when it was three hundred days a year. It's it's insane. Um, but going back to how I met your father, I wanted to ask you this because we are yeah. in the, we are in the uh, streaming age. This show is on Hulu. It's a traditional sitcom in the way that it's set up that you would see on broadcast TV. Uh, you mentioned you know Frasier yeah. or Seinfeld or what have you. Um, when a lot of shows on streaming are like single camera, um, but this one seems to work. Were you worried at all of it being a traditional sitcom on streaming? You know, it, it was more, I, I, I wasn't necessarily considering the difference between streaming or broadcast, but yeah, I mean, I was definitely, I've never worked in multi before. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it felt like going, it felt like time trap, honestly, to go, from a, you know, I've only ever worked with a single cam. To go from that to what feels like, you know, you show up on a sound stage and there's Sophie's apartment. And then we walk 25 feet to the right and there's Sid and Jesse's apartment. Like, it just, it just feels like, um, it feels super retro in a lot of ways. You know what I mean? And I, I, I love that. It was like doing, you basically have to do one play a week. You know, you have two days of rehearsal and then you just got to throw it up. And I love that. I loved how it just it had this real uh, energy to it that, that I think only exists in that form. So the way that we experience the form, whether it's through streaming or on broadcast television, I, I, I think that is something that is sort of irrelevant. It's more just, you know, I think for audiences having to shift back into the mode of watching a multi-cam sitcom is, is, you know, sort of time travel for the audience. Absolutely. You know, it, it definitely has a, a feel of the shows that we like to watch growing up, but it's definitely, as you said, make sure that it speaks to today's generation and, and, the, and, and you know, with all the technology and the, the dating apps and figuring all that out and, and losing your phone. Nobody wants to lose their phone and switch phones with somebody, right? It's like, you don't want that to happen. You can't. You can't do it anymore. You lose your phone, it's over. That's it. <laughs> 
You know, <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld has this bit of like, as your, as your cell phone starts to die, you feel like you're dying with it. So I can only imagine what it'd be like to lose your phone. But, but anyway, um, Chris, it's been great to talk to you. How I Met Your Father premiered on Hulu back in January. The episodes are up now. Make sure you get it. Get the Disney bundle. Save yourself some time. Chris, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. This is a lot of fun. All right. You have a good one. Oh.